The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. BronxNet. Your voice, your views, your vision. Talk. Last month, three generations of the Bronx family were wiped out in a horrific crash that saw their SUV vault over a Bronx River Parkway fence and tumble to the ground below. But this wasn't the first time there was an accident of that nature in that area. One of tonight's guests says that he had the state DOT or had the state DOT listen to him in a letter he wrote that terrible accident could have been prevented. So where do we go from here? as far as the Bronx River Parkway and other potentially dangerous Bronx roadways, Bronx roadways. And how, in fact, did we get to this point in the first place? Have the roads been repaired? Are they neglected? Or was this simply an unfortunate matter of circumstance? Difficult questions, and we have a couple of experts in the studio to provide us with some guidance. The phones are open, so you can feel free to join us at 718-960-7241. You can also email questions or comments to us at bronxtalk at hotmail.com, and we'll read those on the air during a future edition of our program. Both of tonight's guests have been here before from the Cross Bronx Initiative. It's William Rivera. Thank you, William, for joining us once again. Thank you. And the AAA's Manager of Public Information. Welcome back, Robert Sinclair, Jr. Always great to have you. Good to be here. Thank, Thank you. you. William, let's start with you. Um, what was your concern after that first accident in June, and what did you tell the uh, state DOT about what needed to be done at the Bronx River Parkway? <clears throat> well, the, the accident in June came about after the tragic accident on the Cross Bronx, uh, I believe October of last year, when a couple was hit on an ice storm and they uh, fell over 70 feet. Uh, unfortunately, the female passed away and the male was a boxer who survived. And after that accident, I decided to travel on the Cross Bronx and my community board and just take a site visit of anything that was unusual. and. Uh, the, cross, the Bronx of Ravi and the Cross Bronx Expressway, which is right near where this recent tragic accident happened, passed through there and I saw that the uh, barriers were low, 14 to 18 inches high on in average, and curved outward. Uh, and I said, interesting, this is the same spot in June of last year where a passenger car flew off and went into the precinct parking lot. And, and that, we should add, that remarkably, uh, the people uh, survived that survived crash. Survived that crash. Uh, landed on another vehicle, an SUV. And I said, well, uh, the problem is it's probably because that guardrail is pretty low. And there's, adjacent to that was a walkway, a pedestrian walkway, that people could just go back and forth. So I wrote a letter to the state on an issue on the Cross Bronx Expressway in the Sheridan with, uh, with barriers. And I included the, uh, the Bronx River Parkway section of that, where that accident happened uh, recently. And uh, that was November of last year. Did you get a response? No, I didn't get a response. I even, to, even a thank you for your letter, dear sir, we appreciate your concerns, nothing like that. No, I, I write a lot of letters and I don't get responses to a lot of them. And uh, I will be writing another letter, uh, certified this time, uh, return receipt. So. Um, what, what was your reaction when you heard, as we all, of course, were horrified, but aside from the horror, when you did you make the connection in your mind, wow, this was figuratively and literally an accident waiting to happen? Yeah, uh, when a car flies off the highway 30 feet, that's an unusual occurrence, and I think the state or well, the authorities have the responsibility to come out and check, could this have been prevented? Could we assess the situation? Was speeding the problem? Was a barrier a problem? Uh, I believe this was another neighborhood of the country. Uh, this, we would have had a different response to the first accident in June, and may, this may have been prevented. Uh, there has been documented that uh, poor neighborhoods have uh, bad road designs. And so your, your contention right now is that Partially, there is some sense of, well, it was only the Bronx River Parkway, that kind of thing happens, or some other consideration to say, well, we, we don't want to get out there. Exactly. I, I, yeah. Well, let's talk to Mr. Sinclair, who studies and follows the roads all over the New York metro area. Mm -hmm. um, 
is his contention that maybe some neighborhoods are neglected worse than others a reasonable one or is there something else afoot here i think the entire city of new york must be considered poor if that's the case um, we've got a lot of bad roadways and not just within the city but in the outlying areas in uh, nassau and suffolk county and westchester county um, our roadways are old. Um, the Bronx River Parkway is one of the glaring examples. It was first conceived in 1907 and opened in 1925 and served as the first limited access highway in the United States of America. And yet here we are today and it's being used as a high speed roadway and it was never envisioned to be that sort of roadway. In 1925 a vehicle would be hard pressed to do 50 miles an hour and people are consistently probably doing 70 and 75 miles per hour on that roadway. It's hilly, it's twisty, the lanes are narrow, the on and off ramps are too short, and as Mr. Rivera mentioned, that there are these pedestrian walkways with curbs that are about two and a half feet high next to them, and any traffic engineer will tell you don't put a curb next to a high-speed roadway. It serves as a launching pad if somebody hits it. Well, maybe in 1907 that was you know, state of the uh, art. State of the art <laughs> yeah. <or> consideration. <laughs> mm -hmm. What is the habit, what is the process for getting roadways reviewed and looked at? Is there a habit? Is there a process? Or do you have to be even a better letter writer than Mr. Rivera <laughs> is to get somebody to take a look? You probably have to be an elected official. I mean, for basic maintenance, for potholes and that sort of thing, DOT crews are going to take care of that. For anything over and above, major work such as what we've seen recently, on the Bronx River Parkway, that, that seems to be fraught with politics. And somebody has to make a phone call and, and talk to somebody in order to get these sort of things done. How common is this, what appears to be, and now in retrospect, appeared to be a very glaringly dangerous spot? How mm. prevalent is that in the city? Do you think, uh, listen, I, I'm not uh, arguing that maybe some roadways need repair, mm. but this, the way it's been described, and I've driven on that any number of times, I know exactly what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, is this a commonplace thing throughout the city of New York, or was this really an exception to be just, you know, so dangerous? No, this is extremely common. There are lots of roadways really? in our area. Oh, absolutely. You know, the 14 to 18 inches seems to be bar barely comprehensible if that's how high a fence is. Like that, well, the curb, there's a curb, there's a pedestrian walkway, and then there's a four foot high fence. And it's a, like a wrought iron railing, fairly thick. You know, it's about as thick as your wrist. It's a, a strong piece of steel probably, but not sufficient to catch a flying Honda Pilot uh, with seven people on board. Uh, there, that is, you know, nothing like that would be put on a modern roadway where it being constructed today. Um, there are far superior barriers that they would have on the roadways, but it's it's very common that we have poor roadways in our area. I, William, I've been stuck in traffic traveling south on the Bronx River Parkway because they're doing now construction and some sort of amelioration of the of the problem. Uh, can you describe what it is that they're going to be doing, and uh, do you have a sense, at least on a temporary basis, this is somewhat adequate? The the uh, State Department of uh, Transportation released a uh, press release that was published on the borough president's website. Uh, 35 miles per hour, they're restricting the speed limit because it is a construction zone. They put solid white, uh, yellow lines so the traffic can stay in their lane, and they put temporary so new barriers. So there can't be any movement back and forth. Correct, and they put temporary new barriers, which I believe are 2 feet 8 inches, higher than the previous ones. And, and since it is marked a construction zone, I'm assuming they're going to replace the old antiquated barriers that were there before. And to interject with Mr. Sinclair, uh, we do have antiquated roadways, and modernizing them is a problem, and it's all budget. Mm -hmm. All has to do about the money sure. and where the money goes. And the Bronx River Parkway is under the authority of the New York State Department of Transportation. And uh, they did act very fast. I want to uh, commend the borough president, the elected officials, and the State Department of Transportation. After the second accident. After, unfortunately, the second accident, they acted very fast for this issue, but too late. And I think, uh, I think the, hopefully we could get more... Uh, uh, more response from the state and our elected officials could push the state to fix uh, other problems in the mm -hmm. Bronx. All right, I do want to mention to viewers if you have a, a, a pet problem in a roadway that you want to bring up, uh, certainly Mr. Sinclair has been around the roads, knows a lot of the roads and a lot of the kinds of problems, or you wanted to weigh in on this, there, there's uh, the phone number um, uh, to do that. Uh, Mr. Sinclair, is there 
let's just let's go on the cheap. Let's say, okay, mm. let's say we're not going to rebuild the Bronx River Parkway. The I, I don't even, can't even estimate what that might be, but we want to put barriers that would at least stop this kind of thing from mm -hmm. happening. Is there technologically something that's designed that could fit and that could work over there that wouldn't mean spending billions and billions of dollars of rebuilding a roadway? Well, they are installing the Jersey barriers. You might be familiar with them. They're the sort of triangular shaped pieces of concrete. Now, why are those better than, the, let's say, the... the you know, they're the higher. They're, okay. they're, number one, they're higher. They're stronger. Um, but the, probably the quickest thing that we could do is rigorous enforcement of the speed limits. If people were to slow down considerably on these roadways, that would make all the difference. Uh, the problem is we've got modern vehicles and uh, people driving them in a way that they think they should be driven, and the roads just aren't up to par. You know, you can't see over blind hills and blind curves. You know, you come up around a turn and then there's a mishap in the middle of the road, and because of the excessive speed, you're on them and you've got another carnage happening. It's the same way on many of our roadways, and short of you know, tearing them down and rebuilding them completely, these Jersey barriers and other things are only temporary, lowering the speed limits. You know, what, you talked about the speed limit, and I must say, and, and while my heart certainly, like everybody else, our hearts bled for the families mm -hmm. and the people involved, at least as I understood the reports, um, the young lady driving it was going 70 or 75 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, that's well over the speed limit and mm -hmm. as you said well over the what the design of the road mm -hmm. can handle right and that is the problem with uh, most of the roadways um, that we see people driving them in a way that they were not designed for you have to understand most of the roadways in our area the major highways were constructed before modern transportation engineering existed before we knew about certain sight lines and gradients and having breakdown lanes on either side of the road um, Back during the uh, Roosevelt administration in the 1930s and 1940s, when we had a New Yorker as president who funneled the money to New York City and a man by the name of Robert Moses to serve as ombudsman over all the money coming in, a lot of things got done, which were great then. But here we are 70 years later, 80 years later, and we're still using these same roadways, and they're just too antiquated. We're going to get to the telephones in a second. William, um, how does this interface with uh, the show that we did a little while back with you and the Cross Bronx Initiative? I'm guessing this is like precisely why you launched the initiative to say, you know what, these are not little problems, these are not side problems, these are central problems. Tell me um, about your initiative and what this kind of happenstance does to what you're trying to do. Well, the Cross Bronx Initiative is uh, going very well. We uh, have support from about 80% of the community boards in the Bronx, and a lot of elected officials are gaining our support, and hopefully uh, we're going to create a roundtable with experts in universities, which we have already, New York State Department of Transportation. Certain individuals in New York State Transportation have been very helpful with data, and we're trying to get updated data to do more studies to hopefully have a ready-to-go project in the future on the Cross Bronx Expressway, which is going to be long-term or, or short-term. And, and that part of the Bronx River Avenue, which is Bronx River Park, which is closer to Cross Bronx, now is about 100,000 vehicles a day, which is a lot. It wasn't built for that. I, you know, I, I saw the numbers in my research before the show, and, and the thought that 100,000 vehicles a day traverse past that spot is remarkable, really. Yeah. It's mind-boggling when you, when you, you know, kind of try to put your arms around what that number means. Um, I do want to ask both of you, actually, about the notion of funding for ideas and roadways. We'll do that in a second, but let's go to the telephone and say hi to Mark from Pelham Parkway. Mark, how are you, sir? Gary, gentlemen. Um, yes. I have a comment to make, and I think I'm a little perturbed about all this. Yes, there was a great tragedy of the loss of life here, but we're not addressing certain issues. I was on the Bronx River Parkway yesterday doing 40 miles an hour, which is the speed limit. And I can't tell you how many times I was cut off and how many times you got SUVs traveling. Now, I was a physics major. If you take a 3,000-pound vehicle and you're doing 70 to 80 miles an hour on that, you've just got enough thrust of what a, of what a jet fighter has. I'm surprised. Every day there's an accident there because people are careless and they don't care. You think after an accident and a tragedy like that, you think people would be more considerate, and they're not. They're less considerate. Right. There was an article in the Daily News by, I think, the district leader of the 85th district, and he admitted in the thing how he was speeding, and he wasn't even paying attention, and he flew off. While we're addressing a situation, we all know that that van was speeding, and I heard a rumor that there was ball tires on the vehicle as well. Right. That's uh, a hazard right Mark, there waiting to happen. 
Cliff, thank you for your comments. Uh, Robert, this is exactly what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I can only imagine if they start pulling people over on the roads, the kind of uproar that there's going to be. And many of your members will say, well, wait a minute, why are they beating on on us when you know what there are so many other problems these are not larger problems but i'm guessing that time has come and you you and the AAA would advocate right now we've got to slow people down we do i mean short of building new roadways this is what has to happen it's a very dangerous situation i remember when i was younger uh, they used to have uh, and i believe it was on connecticut roadways we used to either go up 95 or maybe i forget which roadways they used to put wrecks of automobiles oh, on yeah. the side yeah. to show people mm -hmm. if you you know slow down otherwise this is you is that is that the kind of thing other than you know uh, having a, a, a Highway uh, police officers it's, everywhere? It might not be policy of AAA, but I sure think it's a good idea. I, I worked for the telephone company for as a summer hire when I was in college. And I was driving company vans, intra-company vans. Came up to the Bronx, Bartow Avenue, a lot of buildings up here that I used to deliver to. And we had a week's driver training, and they showed us a film called Signal 40 that was made, I believe, in 1956 by the Ohio State Highway Patrol. And they showed bodies crushed, mangled, and burned from crashes. And you, you think film. anybody who sees that might slow down? Got my attention. I'm still here. I was 19 years old at the time and as wild as you could be, and it, it slowed me down. Do you know people who still don't buckle up? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm I, related I, I say that somewhat rhetorically yeah. because, of course, that's the and, same And thing. New York has a great rate. It's like 90% compliance in New York State, but only 90%, you know? It's been proven over and over again the safety aspects of, of seat belts, and yet people still aren't wearing them. Uh, William, let's let's go back to, and, and then Robert, we're going to get back to you because you're mm -hmm. so close to the notion of how these things are financed. Um, you say you're going to put a round table together, and by the way, I don't know if Mr. Sinclair is on the, around that table, but you probably want to bring him aboard, so that gets Please, my of course. <laughs> but um, uh, in, in terms of you say, okay, we're going to have a round, what do you expect to get out of that round table and Ultimately, everything is going to cost money. I mean, aside from maybe some extra road signs to get people to slow down, um, how do you see that process developing so you can actually get something figuratively, literally, concretely done at the Cross Bronx Expressway uh, or been, elsewhere? It's been going very well. It's a grassroots initiative, uh, and we do need help from elected officials in the community, but it's going very well. We have a, there's not a lot of money, so we, we bank on universities. Uh, the NYU Polytech, uh, Columbia University have a lot of PhD students, uh, master students. They come in and they, they do interns, internships, and they, we had site visits already, and they do projects. And uh, uh, NYU Polytech recently did a traffic management project on the Cross Bronx. Uh, we work with the New York State Department of Health because obviously on the Cross Bronx there's an issue with pollution. So a lot of uh, ag agencies that come together, and it's, it's, it's going to be long term, a couple of years. And mm -hmm. it's, it's moving slow, but it's moving very well. And I'm ho I'm very optimistic we have something concrete the next year or so. There's right. something called NIMTEC, uh, the New York Metropolitan Transportation Council that's already done a series of studies on the transportation problems in New York City, how we have an inordinate amount of trucks, uh, uh, the problems with the roadways, you know, the, prob the, tra the uh, congestion situation. You know, the, there are studies out there, but the problem is we need to start making something happen making something happen and they say there's no money but they gave a trillion dollars to these lying bankers that got us into the financial crisis <laughs> we can find the money when we want to um can things be done uh, and and you and i uh, robert had an email exchange in setting up this program and mm -hmm. and i was we were talking about you know what can be done you know can we make adjustments you said you know we really need to overhaul roadways that is a a large financial commitment are there things that can be done short of overhauling. Now, I'll give you an example. There was mm -hmm. a study done of interchanges. I might have read it in Car and Travel magazine, and I think mm -hmm. the worst interchange in New York was the interchange between the Cross Bronx to the Bronx River Parkway, where you have a major thoroughfare and everybody's going to get off the highway yeah. to traverse to the next highway, mm -hmm. and, and you sit there in the lights, and I, if you're a Bronxite like I have been, you, you've done it a million times. Can those kinds of things in small areas be done short of saying, well, let's redo the, or put a roof over the Cross Bronx? Yeah, something. I guess you could rebuild those interchanges. Uh, they're rebuilding uh, the, another bad interchange now at the, the Major Deegan in the Cross Bronx, all the work that's going on there. We've got trucks funneling from two lanes to one lane and having to get, if they're heading toward New Jersey, over from the far right lane to the far left lane because they have to go to the upper level of the George Washington Bridge. 
these are major problems. Major, it's you know, band-aiding them might help in the short term, but you know, the mayor says in his uh, his Plan YC document that the population of New York City is going to grow by a million in the next 20 years, and we've got 19th century roads in the 21st century as part of that plan, and putting in trees and bike lanes and all that kind of stuff. We really need to do major improvements of our roadways. Was money that came out of uh, the, the last go-round, uh, uh, the uh, Obama infusion of money into the infrastructure in the nation, did enough of it come to New York City to improve our roadways? The problem with the Obama money is that, that these projects have to be shovel-ready. And that means the Im environmental impact statements have to have been done, which sometimes takes 10, 15 years. The plans have to be there. So you wind up getting little stretches of roadway re redone that are 100 yards long, 200 yards long, because the plans happen to already be there. We're, we're fooling around. This is a bad joke that's being perpetrated on the American people. And number one city in the country, the headquarters of finance and media and all these other things going on. And we've got these old roadways. We need big dig style projects in the city of New York, such as we had in Boston. It took them 20 years. But if we start now, at least our kids will have a shot. I know, William, this feeds right into what your uh, agenda certainly has been. Um, another uh, aspect of this, and as a Bronxite, I'm sensitive to it. William, I'm assuming you're sensitive to it, is much like what happened with the, uh, well, we had this accident on the Bronx River Parkway, and then a decision was made, and they, they did some uh, adjustments. Um, how do we get community people, experts like Mr. Sinclair and others, in on the dialogue so that before decisions are made, inclusion of community boards, inclusion of uh, advocacy groups like yours are involved, so that people who really ride the roads and are really concerned about them have input as opposed to, gee, what project is this? And then all of a sudden, why do they do it that way? That made no sense. Uh, You're following right along, yeah. I'm sure. Instantly, anybody could go on the New York State Department of Transportation websites, and they have all the projects listed online. Uh, grassroots and really in the trenches in the community is initiatives like myself. Uh, unfortunately, there's no dialogue at all I've seen uh, in elected officials and, and community boards on how we're going to fix the problem of these antiquated expressways and arteries in the Bronx. And my initiative is bringing light to that. And it probably could start at the community board level, at transportation committee levels, and could go right up to the to the board meetings and then to the borough presidents until, but this is state highway, so also we had our assemblymen and our senators, and, and there's, a, there's a lot of red tape and a, and a lot of policy making, and, and I, I think if we have some elected officials who get together with this initi initiative with the community and push, I think we could get some funding here. A lot of these projects are funded by the federal government, and to interdict uh, the Seattle Way viaduct on the other side of the country, they're eliminating that viaduct and putting a tunnel, it's billions of dollars, and that's, most of that's funded by the federal government. So we need influence in the Bronx and in the city and in the states, our federal government, to say when there's money, when there's money again, we have to give money to, to, mm -hmm. to, to the Bronx. To infrastructure. Robert, um, Bronx River Parkway, Cross Bronx, do you have any pet spots? <laughs> he's, he's got, I didn't know what his typewritten list was. Apparently, you want to read it? Uh, well, you've got, uh, obviously, there's uh, some in the Bronx there. The George Washington Bridge, obviously, that you, you already nah, talked yeah, about. Yeah, I mentioned that. that, the problem uh, with that. Sawmill River Parkway. Hutchinson, these are all Bronx roadways. So Mill River Parkway is a parkway with interchanges, with, with intersections and lights, with narrow lanes. It's also twisty and hilly. It's one of those 1920s, 1930s roads. Okay, uh, and the Hutchinson River Parkway, we know how it backs up trucks, all the way to trucks south. Trucks hitting bridges there all the time. We're in the process of doing a study of the Hutch right now. There, it is the number one location, I believe, in New York State for trucks to hit overpasses. For some reason, a lot of trucks are driving onto the hutch. I thought I thought uh, you're not allowed to be on the the hutch. You're not, but they go. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> we're, they breaking, go. we're breaking uh, rules. Uh, yeah, left and I right thought here. maybe they're using GPS devices or something. These truck drivers are from out of town, and there is no warning system. Yeah, I, I went to the IKEA in Brooklyn, and they have a steel frame with chains hanging down. If your vehicle is higher than this, you shouldn't be driving under this. This because there's an under ground parking garage or parking garage below the uh, elevated building and they have a warning thing there you know perfectly good you hear the chains rattle stop they don't have anything like this on any of our roadways and it's a common problem with trucks going on the parkways and uh, hitting bridges Robert you're a little more worldly certainly than I am and, and I don't know but I don't want to speak for William but compare our roadways for other older cities Chicago or you know uh, Los Angeles or uh, Philadelphia. Maybe. Philadelphia probably rivals us in uh, bad roadways, considering the age of their mm -hmm. bridges and the age of their roadways. 
The problem is that when you look at a map of New York, we are an island city. Four of the five boroughs are on islands, and the Bronx is the only mainland borough. And why is that? A, a, because of all the bridges? You know, well, that's the problem. All the bridges that you have as a result, right. and the bridges are falling apart. Uh, the roadways are falling well, apart. One would think, and William, I guess this feeds right into a part of what your uh, agenda is. One would think that if we're looking for jobs, and one of the things were, were construction jobs, this is where we could find them. So one would think that this would be a great policy statement to make. Let's let's really create a process to redo roads, right? Yeah, the, 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 uh, nobody likes to talk about it. It's not an easy answer. Uh, especially elected officials. It's not a, it's not a short-term fix. And it's, it's hard because there's no funding. But there's something like this that's so tragic that our roads are falling apart on, beneath us could turn into something great like job creation uh, and getting private investors involved, maybe right-of-ways and a rail, uh, maximizing our waterways. There's a whole, bu whole bunch of uh, ideas that are out there. And on the, uh, the Cross Bronx Expressway, which is mostly through traffic, of commercial traffic, uh, there's, there's, there's a I think that's something big. I think these commercial vehicles could do congestion pricing. There could be tolls for the commercial vehicles. These commercial vehicles are going through the Bronx, and the Bronx is suffering. And be the careful if you use the word toll next to that the congestion pricing next thing. To Watch that, please. <laughs> <laughs> but Gary, the listen. Guy. The list of businesses that have left our area is long because it's difficult. Manufacturing businesses because it's very difficult to get parts into the city, and it's very difficult to get finished goods out of the so, city. So it could pay for itself in some way. Absolutely. Uh, Robert, uh, we're just about out of time. How, how can AAA membership uh, uh, play in this whole process? Uh, certainly as an advocacy organization, they, I guess it can. They are all the strength of numbers. I mean, we have something called CapWiz, where members that go to our website can forward their, their emails to elected officials, and we have a list. And in fact, with the Port Authority toll hike, we had more than 150,000 letters, I'm sorry, 750,000 letters sent wow. to uh, elected officials as a result of the tolls going out, and it got their attention. So if we do more shows like this, maybe we can get we can it. It's AAANY.com. I've been I'm on sorry, that website. I'm sorry, change it around. We change what, it's new? <laughs> it's a new URL. <laughs> oh, what is it? NY.AAA.com. NY.AAA.com. You can use the old one I for a couple months. I did use it, and I was just on there. Not for long. Oh, okay. <laughs> NY.AAA.com. Robert, I hope you'll come on back and, and join us. Anytime. Okay. William, uh, for you, what's next? I uh, was just still getting the uh, support from the elected officials. Oh, Jane is telling me we're out of time. Uh, if they want to contact you, they do that through just your Facebook Just go right on page. Facebook, Cross Bronx Initiative. Gentlemen, thank you. Important dialogue to have, and of course, we're glad to have it here on Bronx Talk. Thank if you, you have thank further you. comments or questions on anything you heard on tonight's show or anything going on in the Bronx, then email them to us at bronxtalk at hotmail.com, and we'll read those on the air during a future edition of our program. Archives of Bronx Talk, available at bronxnet.org. You click Bronx Talk on the right-hand navigation bar. Also, please become a fan of our page on Facebook, Bronx Talk. They'll do that too, I'm sure. Next Monday night, we'll present a wonderful public school program that lets high school seniors learn by doing. Then the week after, make a note, June 4th, we'll be joined by the controller of the City of New York, John Liu. We'll talk about roadways with him. Mm -hmm. Lots to talk about. Fresh Direct, Filtration Plant, Roadways, the Race for Mayor, and much more. Bronx Talk every Monday night here on BronxNet. Cablevision 67, Verizon Files 33. Thanks to Jane, who's our producer, Michael, who's our director, Dina, the cast of thousands, and to you and to them and everybody.